Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, may your word go forth with power, with your spirit, and with much assurance. May our inner man be strengthened tonight. May our inner man be strengthened. Glory to God. Every spirit that was coming against us, every giant that was coming against us, fall now. Every stronghold the enemy was trying to set up is destroyed now. And the power of the blood flow over each and every single life in this place. Those that are tuned in online right now in the name of Jesus. The power of the blood flow. The blood of the Lamb. Ho Rabashonda. The blood of the Lamb. Ha Rabashonda. My goodness. Oh, glory to God. Ha Rabba. I want you to say this. I place my life. I place my life. My heart. My, heart. my soul. My soul. In the Redeemer's hands. In the Redeemer's hands. In the blood of the Lamb. In the blood of the Lamb. Ha Rabashonda. Come on. I place my life. I place my heart. My soul. My mind. My thoughts, my memory, my imagination, my feeling, my will. I place it in the blood of the Lamb, in my Redeemer's hands. Mold me, make me, according to your will. Glory to God. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. We yield tonight. Come on, less of me and more of you. Lord, less of me and more of you. I want more of you, Lord. More of you, more of you, more of you. More of you. Oh, Rabbi Shondo. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Man, greet somebody around you. Let them know it's good to see them in the house of God. Whew. And you may be seated. Wow, glory. What? And we're standing. What a mighty God we serve. Let me try that again. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. How is everybody doing tonight? Praise the Lord. We're going to go over, I don't know how far we'll get. Uh, we're going to start opening some of this stuff up that we've been, the Holy Spirit has been showing us uh, in 1 John. write this down. What am I practicing? What, what am I practicing? How many know God can do the impossible? Amen. No, I mean, I mean, how many of y'all really know Amen. God Amen. can do the impossible? Amen. How many of y'all know I did not like dogs? We're going to get a dog. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God, right, Randy? Man, I ain't ever seen Randy this happy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's excited. I know I would hurt her feelings when I would talk bad about dogs, but now she's excited because I'm going to have one. And uh, I'm going to have my own Westie. It's a Westie pup. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're called. Is is a little little dog getting for Tater, well for the family. Sorry, Dylan. Dylan. 
wh what are you practicing? You know, uh, I did, I, I, for those of you that don't know, I like to play racquetball. And uh, I, would, I would say I'm pretty good. And, uh, and so, but I had these shoes, man, that just, oh my gosh. I would peel out when I would run. You don't ever try to run in some shoes and you peel out. You don't move. Your feet are moving, but you don't move. That's what I had. And I was like, man, imagine come find some shoes. So when we were in Columbus, I said, man, I got to give me some shoes. Because I, my big toe was already touching the floor. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they don't wear out them soles. And so, man, so I tried on some different shoes. And I, what I was doing, I would, I would go real fast and I'd stop. <laughs> I wasn't I doing that in in the foot plow, I would be like, oh, yeah, okay, these are good. And so I'd kind of go and check in the bottom, see which ones are going to work. And so I found some that, that man, they, I didn't know where they were. I just knew, man, these things got some traction. Boy, I can really move in these. And uh, so I got them. Man, when I came back, everybody's like, oh, Pastor, your shoes are just like that right there. Put, uh, put, put the camera on. Jalen's shoes right there. What, what are they called? Kyrie. I was going to say Kylie. <laughs> Kyrie Irving's. And so, man, I, they're just basketball. I mean, they're basketball shoes, but to me, they're just shoes, right? And so we, we uh, uh, the other Sunday, was it, was it Sunday when, when, when Katie came with us? Yeah. It was a Sunday after church, and Brandy and Kaz's little boy, uh, Kaden, he came, came home with us. Now, I don't know if you've ever gotten around Kaz. And Jermaine, when they start talking sports, I love being around them. They talk sports because they'll always get to arguing. And uh, it's just funny. It's a funny sight to see. And so Caden's like, Pastor, you got some Kyrie's. I said, yeah, I got some. I said, yeah. I, he said, uh, I said, that's why I play racquetball. He said, oh, you, you can't play racquetball. Those are, those are basketball shoes. I said, no, man, I, I got these to play racquetball. He said, Pastor, you can't wear those to play racquetball, those are basketball shoes. I said, man, I don't care what they are. I'm good. How old is Caden? Seven. Seven. I saw, and man, all of a sudden, he gets stirred up. He sounds just like Kaz. I mean, he, me and him are going back. I said, man, look, I'm going to wear them. They're for basketball court. I said, the, the racquetball court is the same as the basketball. No, it isn't. Those are basketball. You can't, you can't, you're going to mess them up. Those are basketball shoes. You can, I said, man, I don't wear, wear. He said, those are the wrong shoes. And man, I, just, I was laughing about it. And then as, when I went to go play racquetball, the Holy Spirit told me, not any shoe will work. And so I said that to say this because, tell your neighbor, not any shoe will work. Wearing the wrong shoe, uh, 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 not any shoe will work when you're looking at the gospel. My God. Not any shoe will work when you're looking at the gospel. Uh, uh, you remember he told Moses, take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. Uh, you, you stand on holy ground. You, 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 you're in a different place. You're, you're about to go to another level. And the shoes that you have, they ain't going to work. The shoes that you have, they ain't going to work. You're going to have to change some stuff up. And then, and then he said, he said in, in Ephesians 6, he said, put on the whole armor of God. Shod your feet. Shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, uh, I don't even know what verse that is. Shod your feet. What is that, 16? 15? Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God. Verse 15. Shod your feet. Uh, prepare. I mean, come on, you're going to have to bind your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, I'm going to tell you how, how I, because a lot of times we're, we're in the word, but we're wearing the wrong shoe. Let me say it like this. Let me say, say it like this. When you are looking at the gospel, you have to prepare yourself for peace. No, no, no. You have to be prepared because the word of God will correct you. The word of God is alive, sharper than a two-edged sword. It will cut some things out. And, and, and I've got to be prepared that whatever God is going to speak to my life, I've got, I've, I've got to, I've, my heart has got to be at least soft enough to receive what he's speaking to me. 
not receive what I think he's speaking to my spouse. What, 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 what is he speaking to me? Jesus, man, I, I'm almost, I, I can go in a certain mean direction, but I'm not. And so, uh, not any shoe works. I, I can't, okay, how, how many of you tried uh, reading the Bible before you got saved? How many know it, 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 it? What am I reading? Forget this. Y'all remember them days? I was wearing the wrong shoe. See, I, not any shoe's going to work. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to change some stuff up. One, I'm going to have to receive Jesus. And then I'm going to have to be ready because when I open this, this word is alive and he'll begin to, he'll begin to deal with me in areas that need to be dealt with. He'll be, begin to deal with me with some areas that need to be changed. He'll begin to deal with me in some areas I need to start practicing. Come on, someone say, I need to start practicing. And so uh, you got to understand that he came, that you would have life. Okay, bring this down. I don't want to be up here today. <clears throat> and then this water is too warm. That's a, go ahead, go ahead, help them. Please, sir, will you go give me some cold water? Uh, my throat a little dry. <clears> throat> I already feel that glass warm. Uh, come on, say this. He came that I might have life and might have it more abundant. See, so, so, so when he came, he didn't come for you just to have a heartbeat. Wow, I feel the Spirit of God on you, man. He didn't come for you just, he didn't come for you to have existence. He came that you would have life. And then he said, I came that you might have it more abundant. So he, he didn't say, I, I didn't come just for you to be alive and exist. And now he has a heartbeat, he's alive and he exists now. No, no, he said, I, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. And but, oh, God, Jesus, thank you, sir. But one of the reasons we ain't having it is because when we read that, that we, 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 we automatically, well, how come I ain't having it yet? No, see, you already, you, you already got the wrong shoes on. Take, you're wearing the wrong shoe. See, I've already got, see, I'm already in the wrong shoe. I'm going to have to shod my, I got to prepare my feet with peace because I'm about to walk in the word. My God, I've got to teach, but I'm about to walk. Come on, say, I'm about to walk in the word. I got to receive what he has for me. You, you know when somebody's receiving when somebody isn't. And the reason we, a lot of us ain't walking in what he asked for is because we ain't receiving or even grateful for what he's giving. Are y'all seeing this? I said, are you seeing this? And so, and so, and so, I, I, so when I hear Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly, automatically, thank you, Lord. I'm going to have life. I'm going to have life more abundant. Come on, say that. I'm going to have life. And I'm going to have it more abundant. Okay, so, 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 see, he didn't come just so that you would exist. But, so, and so he said, but might, because you, he knows before they said, but there's an enemy. And you're going to have to avoid this enemy. You're going to have to avoid the thief. You're going to have to avoid the killer, I receive. You're going to have to avoid the destroyer. I said you got to avoid the, come on, someone say, avoid the thief, avoid the, thief. Avoid the, destroyer. Avoid the destroyer, avoid the killer, avoid the killer. And, receive and receive life, life more abundant. Life more abundant. So, so, so now when I, so in his word are all these instructions to keep me from the thief, the killer, and the destroyer. I said in his word are all these instructions on how to avoid Destroy yes, the works of the destroyer. Come on. Destroy the plans of the killer. And destroy the plots of the thief. But because these things are going, th th these instructions are things that deal with me. I've got to have my feet ready to receive. So I can't come to the word and I can't come to church already with an opposition stance and expect God to do something. 
See, I can't, I can't come to church and come and, 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 and get in my, with an opposition. It's like, well, I'm just going to do this so that way nobody. No, see, you, you, you're not going to get. No, your feet, you're, you're wearing the wrong shoes. I want you to say this. He who surrenders will win in life. Come on, say it again. He who surrenders will win in life. One more time. You say it. Write this word down, revive, write revival, 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 huh? How many of y'all pray, ever pray for revival, huh? Lord, pray for revival. Lord, praying for revival. Uh, glory to God, man, Rev revival, 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 revive. That we, revive. we get the word revival from the word revive. Revive, it means to live. But you have to die in order to live you have to die in order to revive see we ask God send revival but really you have to be made see hold on see we ask God Lord send revival can I tell you something I said can I tell you something it ain't up to God to send revival tell you never it's up to you to have revival it's up to you to revive it's up to you to have life. It's completely up to you because, watch this, watch this. You and I have to be containers for revival. Man, Jesus. See, you have to be, you have to be made because we wanted God to pour out new wine in old wineskins. He said, man, I can't do that. But if you become the container that revival can hold, revival will bust out. Jesus, man, watch this, watch this. See, see, we, we've got to position, Jesus, we've got to position ourselves. We've got to position, let, let, let me help you. Uh, the flood didn't come until Noah made the ark. Until he did, until he did, according to God's word, then the flood came. When, when the, the, the fire didn't come and, and burn up the offering uh, 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 until Elijah made an altar according to God's word. Then the fire came and burned up the offering. Are y'all seeing this? The, the, the Red Sea didn't part until somebody lifted up their hands. My God. You see, th th nothing happened until someone positioned themselves according to God's word. You want me to tell you revival's going to break out in your house? When somebody positions themselves according to God's word. My God. See, you've got to become a container that revival can flow through. See, revival is, is, is heaven's fire. My God. Jesus. Holy Ghost, I gotta calm down. I'm not even trying to talk about revival. But see, some of us need, need, need to revive. We need life again. Okay, then. Okay, if we need life again, it's because, come on, come on, somewhere I, 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 I haven't been positioning myself for God to pour Himself out. We've all been there. Huh? Okay. Okay. Jesus. Now, so there's some things we got to do and some things we got to quit doing. Am I talking to believers tonight? Okay, go to Romans chapter 2. Go to Romans chapter 2. Someone say, revival going to break out in my life. Revival going to break out in my home. In the name of Jesus. Revival is going to break out in my life. Revival is going to break out in my home. Revival is going to break out in my church. Revival is going to break out in my city. You see, but, but, but God needs someone to position themselves. Praise and worship. He needs someone to position themselves. Are, are y'all hearing this? Things didn't happen until someone, okay, the fire, the, the, the Holy Ghost, my God, didn't come down until, until they positioned themselves according to the word in the upper room. Are y'all, see, are, you see it? See, until they positioned themselves according to his word in the upper room. See, so I'm going to have to shard my feet with peace because somebody's positioning, you, you've been hearing, God's been telling you fast. And you hadn't done it yet. 
No, that's God speak. God, God is trying to set up a revival in your life. See, but you have to do, do it according to his word, not to, see, so I'm wearing the wrong shoes. Now, nah, I don't need to fast. No, he's telling you to fast for a reason. Are, are y'all hearing this? Okay, okay. Romans chapter 2. Okay, glory to God. Come on, someone say, what are you practicing? All right. Uh, everybody do like this. Everybody just, j- just go like this. Just, you know, take off those shoes and then put on the shoes of peace. Okay, you got them. All right. Especially for this first chapter. <laughs> Everybody got them? Ask your neighbor, did you get them on? <laughs> Tell the person next to you, phew. Oh, yeah, God. Therefore, I mean, look how he's going to start, Leah. You're inexcusable. Oh, man, whoever you are, who, whoever you are who judge, and whatever you judge another, you condemn, you, you condemn yourself. For you judge and practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth against those who, against those who, they practice those things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things, and yet you doing the same, that you escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? Man, look at verse, underline verse 4 in your Bible. The riches of his goodness, the forbearance, the long-suffering, not knowing the goodness of God leads you to repentance... See, the goodness of God is to lead you to change the way you think, change the way you were doing things, and go a different way. I, I was talking to a young man earlier, and he said, Pastor, just I feel like because I, I, I did something bad, I need to be punished. I, I said, do you need me? To, I got a paddle. I'll get, I'll, you want me to paddle you? He said, maybe that's what I need I, because I'm just used to. No, I'm serious. This is, me. This is a grown man talking. He said, I've been just used to somebody yelling at me. And, 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 and hit me, and I just, I feel like because of what I did, uh, I need to be punished. I said, I said, I said, I already know what that is. Holy Spirit showed me right away. That's a, con, 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 a spirit of condemnation. That you don't realize, watch this, watch this. And he said, because, because now he said, I feel like I've grown so almost, my heart has hardened towards God. That I know what I need to do, but I don't do it. Anyone ever been there? I didn't say if you were there, but have you ever been there? That I know what to do, but I just don't do it. Almost why I don't want to do it because I'm a man. I have this. I don't even know where. I don't know why. I just, I said, well, the first thing you're battling with the spirit of condemnation. I said, you got to come to the truth that what Jesus did on the cross, he took the punishment for you. Jesus, man. He took the punishment for you. Jesus, our big brother, our redeemer, the one we are co-heirs with because the inheritance comes from the father and we're co-heirs with the son, with Jesus, our big brother. So, so big brother said, big brother came, you messed up. Big brother comes and said, I'm going to take your whipping for you. But I'm going to take the whipping that way. You, you, now you, out of gratitude, spend time with dad. Oh, man, y'all missed this, man. Out of your gratitude for me taking this whipping for you, all I'm asking you to do is spend time with Dad. Jesus, man. Are y'all like, what? Out of your gratitude, he took the punishment for you. And he says, man, look, spend, spend time with Dad. Become like him. Church, y'all hearing this? He said, because see, his forbearance, his goodness, his long suffering, him, 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 uh, uh, having to bear with you is not him okaying what you did. It's him hoping you'll come to repentance. Change the way you think. Are you seeing this? 
That's how you're seeing this. But, look at this. In accordance with your hardness, your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath. Rev and rev revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immorality. But those who are self-seeking, got the wrong shoes on, do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, wrath, tribulation, anguish, every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also the Greek. But glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good. To the Jew first and the Greek, there is no partiality with God. For the sake of time, skip down to verse 16. Look what he said. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Write this down. The key is quit basing actions, thoughts, on what others do or don't do. But what am I practicing? I'll say that again. See, what we just read, here's the key. Here's what he's trying to tell them. Quit, quit focusing your actions, your reactions, your thoughts on what the people around you do or don't do. But what am I practicing? He's saying, but what are you practicing? No, don't worry about it. See, see because... Let me say this, let me say this, and I'm going to move on. It is an evil thing to use the love of the Father as a base for justification. Well, He loves me anyway. That is an evil thing to use the love of the Father as a self-gratifying agent to gratify yourself and to excuse my actions. Wow. Are you seeing this? Yes, it, that is an evil thing to try and corrupt something so pure and so holy to give me permission to go and do this. Wow. I'm, I'm Write this down. Good without Jesus is not good enough. Good without Jesus is not good enough. Oh, the fire is going to burn the carpet. Oh, it's a... It's a. Good without Jesus is not good enough. Are you ready for this? Evil works with Jesus. Is not truth. Or let me put it like this. There is no evil works with Jesus. That does not exist. Y'all, man, y'all, y'all, you're killing me, Smalls. Give me say it again. Evil works with Jesus does not exist. I'm going to show you in the word. I'm not, I know, I know. Because we've got to, I mean, what am I practicing? Who am I? Who's really alive in me? If I was today, where really would I go? So, so. Go to 1 John chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, to Glory to God. 1 John chapter 2. That's 16 minutes? Okay. We're going make it, to make it happen, Captain. I got a meeting after this. I forgot I had to leave to Richmond. Yeah, I forgot last week, you know, because I, I leave every other week. And last week we went to Houston. And so I got through, thrown off. So this morning I get a notification, check in for your flight at 5 a.m. I was like, oh, I'm leaving tomorrow. I forgot. So I, got, I said, I hadn't even packed. I 
said, babe, I need some clothes. 1 John 2, 29. First John 2, 29. If you know what, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who is born of him. Now, 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 hold on, because this can't be any righteousness, uh, Yvonne. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first, which is what? God's ways of doing things and His righteousness. See, I got to seek first. Priority number one is His ways of doing things and His way of being right with the Father. Okay, so that's, that's number one. Not, not what everyone else says or not, well, th th this is, man, just got to do what you think is right. No, there's a way that seems right to a man, but I, I could end up in death. Come on, come on. And so, I, so and so that's why I got to have this word. And that's why the enemy is using celebrities and every, everybody and their grandma to tell you to put this book down. That's why the devil fights with you so much not to get in this book. That's because it's alive and it's sharper than two edged sword. He's going to show you, my God, how to please the Father. Okay, so, so 1 John 2.29. If you know that God is righteous, you know everyone who practices. Do you underline that word practice. Okay, 1 John 3, verse 4. Whoever commits, now that word commits is also sort of like someone, not, it's not someone that who does a sin because he said we all sin and fall short. He said he who says he's without sin has made God to be a liar. No, we, we, we sin, we miss the mark, but he said whoever is committed to it, I receive. Whoever is, in other words, whoever practices, high five for effort, okay. Uh, Whoever practices sin. Come on. They, 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 I'm committed to this. This is who I am. I don't care what God says. Okay. Watch. I'm going to help somebody, I hope. Come on. Whoever commits. I'm just going to put committed to sin. Practices sin. Also commits, committed to lawlessness. Hold on. Wait a second. Do you remember Jesus saying something about this? See, I know when he died, he did away with the mo Mosaic law. But there is still a, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. My God. So there is still a law that you and I live by. Remember Matthew 7, I believe Jesus said, that, that there will be some in that day, they'll come to me and they'll say, Lord, Lord, we perform miracles in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We pray for somebody that had demons. And we pray in the name of Jesus. That demon came out. And we all shouted glory. We prophesied in your name. God gave me a word. See, see hold on. Watch, watch, watch. Can, can, see, we, we, we try and just judge uh, false prophets if something didn't come true. But these prophets prophesied and some stuff happened. But yet they still couldn't even get into heaven. Oh, my God. He said, and then, and they'll come to me. And that's, he said, depart from me. I didn't know you. What do you mean you didn't know me? I pray, he said, no, because you who practice lawlessness. There was still the law of the spirit of life of Christ Jesus. He said, see, they're, 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 they were trying, come on, watch this, man. They were trying to live, Elder Jose, off of some exploits. God used them. At one point, God was alive in them. And he used them, and they were trying to live off the exploits here. But over here down the line, they were living a whole different way than when they were back then. One lady said, but she, had, she, she, she died, went to heaven. He said, I don't know. He said, but I prayed every day. I don't know. you." These men said, we, we performed miracles in your name. I don't know. you. I knew you. I don't, I don't know who this is. See, you, you're going to show, we, we're going to show up to heaven as who we are, not who we were. 
What are you doing? What are you practicing? Not what did you... See, because, because watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Uh, Ezekiel, I don't have time to go there, but read Ezekiel 11, 18, and, and I'll come back on the other one. Read, read, it's really in verse 8, in chapter 18. He says, look, see, because I'll prove it to you. He said, in, in chapter 18, he says, look, see, see I'm not going to judge the, 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 the kids by the sins of the father. It's whatever that person does. He said, you know what, if a, if a person, if a person, see, watch, I'm going to help you. See, because he, he, he forgets the past. It's who you are right now. What are you practicing right now? Because watch this. See, they, 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 he said, if you come to heaven and you were, you, you, you got saved. He said, if you, if you were evil and wicked, just a no good for nothing. How many of us know we were no good for nothing, right? Yeah. Were. Past him. He said, but then you get, you repent. Come on. You, you, you turn from that. He said, and then you show up over here. He said, I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna think about what you did back then. I ain't even gonna hold that against you. You repented, man. High five. Very nice, right? But he said on the same note, read it when you get a chance, Zeke 18. If you're over here and you're doing good deeds, you love God. You know, remember, oh, I was on, I, one time I was on fire in Christ. You better get on fire again. While we're having the service in two weeks, reignite that fire. Uh, uh, and he said, if you're on fire here, but then all of a sudden you turn, it's like you unrepent. Come on. And you start doing wicked works. He said, I can't base you today off of what you did then. I got to go right now. Where your heart is right now. See, so, see, because we want him to forget our ugly past. Well, then he'll have to forget our good if we turn to. Okay, uh, Jesus, man. He, Ezekiel 18, read we get a chance. Because what? I'm going to show you here in a minute. I'm going to show you here in a minute. Uh, uh, read, read Hebrews 6 when you get a chance to. Uh, I just want to help you. Whoever abides, look, look, look. Whoever is alive in Jesus... Wait, wait, you know Jesus was manifested to, Jesus was manifested to, and in him, there's no sin. Whoever abides in him, they don't commit to sin. They, they can't practice it. The spirit in them won't let them. Oh, y'all not hearing me, church. Hold on, watch. I'm, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Who, see, that, that's the radicalness of genuine salvation. Come on. See, the radicalness of genuine salvation is some things are taken automatic. Oh, my man. God. But then how many know some things weren't? Yes, sir. Those things were left. He said, you're going to have to, now you're going to have to purify yourself. Because, because if, 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 if he just does it all, then now really it's control. Yeah, yeah, can't, can't. Come on. Now there's really no way of telling that you really love him. Are you willing to lay down your life for him? Oh, now he just controls you and we're robots. But if there's some things I got, I got to purify my, he said, purify yourself. Get into my presence. Let my, my presence wash out. If, 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 this, if this water was full of big red, it'll be red. But if I can, and if, if, I can, if I left this under a, a water spout, eventually it's going to dilute it and it's going to be like a light red. And if, it's going to begin to overflow. And it's going to be overflow. It's, and then one day it's going to be all white and pure. See, that's what God wants, is that you will get under the spout of his presence and let him pour into you with your faults, with your failures. Let him pour into you. Let him pour into you until one day those things that you did battle with that weren't taken automatically, boom, you're like, wait a second. How did I get here? Jesus, man. Are you hearing me? You see? And, and, and so, because I know some things went just, I mean, automatic. But then something like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. What happened here? He said, you got to seek. You seek, you'll find. Well, I don't want to seek. So then the next question, well, did you get saved? Because something radical happens at salvation. 
I'm telling you, something supernatural, how can you meet such a powerful supernatural redeemer and savior like my Jesus and you walk away and just walk back right into You better get to the altar every service. I mean, I'm not, I was one. Every, every service. I, my, my, my wife probably, like, how many times is Duke going to get saved? Because I knew, so, you keep going until something happens. You'll know. You'll know, man. You'll know. Jesus, man, I was at the altar every service. Uh, the women's conference, I was at the altar. I, I was serving. I was there to help. Now I'm going to the altar. Huh? I'm, on, I'm on the corner. I'm on the oh, well, I'm on the corner. Lord, I need you. I mean, how desperate are you? What are you practicing? Is, is this real to you or not? He said, "Look, if 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 if, if you, I remember. I mean, we were like, man, we we can't be living together. We ain't married. We got to get married." Message. Message. Yes, right? Come on. She's like, man, you can't be doing this, but God, you're so fine. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. But I ain't got no money. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Come on. So we got married in the apartment. Because I wanted to honor God. I could my the, the Jesus in me wouldn't let me. He was like, Come on, Mar- you can't. Marcus, Marcus. Marcus, don't touch her, Marcus, Marcus, yeah, I remember them beggars, but just, just one more time, <laughs> I'm just being real, but and you can feel Jesus like Mark, Marcus, You're dishonoring her. You're dishonoring you. You're dishonoring God. God ain't happy with this. But I go to church. God ain't happy with this. You got the wrong shoes on. Jesus, man. Come on, let's get. Are y'all seeing it now? Y'all see the shoes now? Come on. Come on, Pastor. Okay. See, watch. Watch, watch. Look, 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 look. He said, look. He who. Watch. Whoever abides in Jesus, they, they, they can't commit to sin. They can't commit to it. Whoever does commit, whoever sins, commits to sin, practices sins, has neither seen God nor known Him. But I prayed the prayer. But, but I prayed the prayer. God, but I prayed the prayer. What do you mean you don't know me? I don't know you. Because if I would have known you, I would have did a work in you. That's the radicalness of salvation. That's because if, if he really knew you, a work would have happened in you. Yo, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm just, look at the Bible. Little children, don't let anyone deceive you. So many people, so many preachers are deceiving people right now. You, you can do what you want. I just look at the Dagana. Whatever you want, do it. God loves you. So I've taken something pure and holy and corrupted it and used it as it as to excuse. Absolutely he loves me. And that's why ain't nothing bad happening because he wants you to repent. Watch this, watch this. Don't let anyone deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. See, now watch this. Practice. That means... You ain't got it down. You may not have it down, but you're practicing. Whatever you practice, you're going to get good at. Whatever you practice, you're going to get good at. Whatever you practice, you will get good at. I promise you. Can I go ahead and go there? I didn't want to go there yet, but I might, I might as well. I'm running out of time. How many of us, without raising your hands, have a hard time getting to the Bible? We've made it a practice. We practice not doing it. So now you got real good at it. 
Oh, Jesus, man. You practice not doing it. Now you got real good at it. But if you practice worship. See, when I first got saved, I didn't know. I said, by lifting their hands, I was like, let me practice this. What are they doing? I like this. Let me try a clap. I'm off beat. No, hold on. I'll just do this right before I know. Before I... How did you get... I remember I'm like, how are they lifting their hands? Practice. Practice when it, don't, when it feels uncomfortable. Nobody likes practice. Everybody wants to show up for the game. Everyone wants to show up for the big game. But our big game is going to be judgment day. And he's going to be like, okay, what were you practicing? Oh. Our big game is judgment day. What were you practicing? You see, everybody just wants to play the game. But nobody likes practice. But it's practice that's going to make you good. My God. See, he said, if you'll practice this righteousness, if you'll practice seeking, if you'll practice seeking, you're going to end up finding. If you practice, my God, watch this, watch this, watch this. Listen, listen, listen. See, what are you practicing? If you're practicing, okay. Now, see, we got to come out of this being lazy. You got to come out of this being lazy. You got to get up early. Huh? Come on, we got to get, man. We, he, said, he said, man, it, 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 uh, poverty will pounce on you. Come on, we got to come out of this. Being lazy. Yeah. If you keep practicing it, you're going to get real good at it. You're going to get real good at it. So what do you do? Set an alarm. Start practicing. Not, not just getting up, but in everything. You can start practicing setting your day up. I'm doing this and this time. From this time to this, I'm going to do this. From this to this, I'm going to do that. From that to See, start practicing like he said, Lord, help us to number our days. Help us to prioritize my day so I don't waste anything, so I'm not lazy, so I'll be a good steward of my spiritual life. I'll be a good steward of my physical life. I'll be a good steward of my financial life. I'll be a good steward of my family life. I'll be a good steward of my marital life. Are you seeing this? Lord, help me to number my day. See, I've got to be. I receive some. I've got to be a good steward. And so, but, but I've got to start practicing, but now, see, because we did it, well, ah, I just can't do it. Keep practicing. If you keep practicing, you're going to get better at it. But you got to practice. Practice makes. I told, I said, I said this one guy, I said, I said, how is it, how is it that uh, you're better at working, better at working cars than me? How is it you're better at working on cars than me? You practiced. You got good at it. I said, why is it I'm better at the word than you? I practiced. And you don't want to practice. It ain't because I'm smarter than you. It ain't because I, I like, I, use, I like, no, I did not like to read. Love now, but I didn't then. Cheated my way through for senior year. I did. So, I mean, I, I hated reading. But now, my God, but you got to practice. Whatever you practice, you're going to get good at it. And that's why God, I, 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 cut, I cut a lot short, but listen, watch this. Watch this, hold on. Little children, only known to see that he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as God is righteous. He who sins practices sin. He said, I'm just reading the Bible. Y'all can't get mad at me, all right? See, you're going to have to change your shoes. He's of the devil. I don't, I don't. Verse 8, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. And the purpose of the Son of God manifests with that he would destroy the works of the devil. Whoever's been born of God doesn't sin. They don't commit to sin. Because his seed, the seed of Jesus Christ, remains in him. And he can't. He might fall, but he's like, I, I can't stay there. Anyone ever mess up? And you're like, what the heck did I do? I can't stay there. What, what was that? Jesus alive in you. Do y'all see that? Huh? Yeah, I remember, I remember. I, mean, I was saved. I, mean, I was saved. My friend came over. He had a bag of dope. I was like, man, I didn't want to. Everything in me didn't want to. I could feel 
Jesus, I feel Holy Ghost say, Marcus, don't. That's, that's nasty. He kept on, you know, the pain. Take pain away. All right. I took one hit. I was gone. I said, man, I was looking at him. And I just started getting grossed out. I just, I was, I, was, I said, man, you, hey, bro, I don't feel good. You're going to have to go, man. I got I to gotta go sleep. I don't feel good. He's like, all right, I'll come back later. I said, oh, okay. Man, I just, Lord, get it off me. Get it off. Get it off. It just felt nasty. What happened? Christ in me. He was alive in me. You can't stay here, Marcus. This ain't you no more. I'm alive in you. I've got something better for you. I've got something dim for you. There'll be times in your Christian life, maybe you, you, you end up at the wrong place. You, you end up with, around the wrong people, and you can feel the Holy Ghost say, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. Wrong place. Yeah. Come on, get, no, th- 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 this ain't you. Come on, let's go. Let's get up out of here. Yeah. Why? Christ in me. He said, you can't, he said, you can't, hey, your flesh is trying to stay, but the Jesus in you say, come on, man, we got to go. Yeah. Jesus, man. Are y'all seeing this? If you start, if you get, if you get to practicing secluding yourself, you're going to get good at it. One thing the enemy desires is to get, get you alone by yourself. If you, if, you, if you keep practicing going over the past till you get depressed, going over the past till you get angry, going over the past till you get bitter, you're going to get good at it. And can I tell you something? Satan will cheer you on. I'm going to give you this last verse. R- write this verse down. You, I want you to see them. Uh, what did I give you? 1 John 3, right? 2 John 1, verse 9 through 11. 3 John 1, verse 11. I want you to see. I'm going to read verse 11 to amplify. Beloved, do not imitate evil. Imitate good. He who does good is of God. He who does evil hasn't seen God, discerned, or experienced God. He has enjoyed no vision of God and does not know him at all. So if God, if I don't know God, then God don't know me. But I went to church. I don't, I don't know you. See, he can only do so much. You and I, we got a position. He, 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 he said, you got to avoid the evil one because he's out to get you back. Huh? 3 John 1, verse 4. And I, I'm, I'm closing right here. Because you got to understand this. 3 John, verse 4. You got it? I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. He said, oh, that gives me such a joy to see my children walking in the truth, walking in the light. See, because Satan will cheer you on until your heart becomes so hard that you can no longer hear the voice of the Father. Can I be real for you for a second? Are you sure? Jesus said he's at the steel, kill, and destroy. God said, man, I love seeing my children walk in the truth. Satan loves seeing God's children not walk in the truth. And he will keep cheering you on. There you go. Keep not seeking. Oh, man, keep, keep going to them places. There you go. No, hey, good job. I remember we were playing volleyball. We were playing volleyball. And, and. And any team we would play, the opposite team, anytime they would mess up, they, they would hit the ball out of bounds. I'd be like, hey, hey, that's good job. Keep, just like that every time. Every time, just like that. Okay, there you go. No, no, I don't care what your team said. That was good. Saying the same way. He's like, there you go. Ah, ah, no. Keep, keep not coming to church. No, 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 no. Good, no. That was a good job, man. Good, good, man. 
That's a good right there. Don't listen to them. No, you do. You, you stay at home. No, you're right. You stay at home. You, yeah, you're right. There you go. Don't seek God. Don't open your Bible. There you go. Man, that was a good job. That was a good job. Don't worship. Don't worship the Father. See, Satan's right there cheering you on. There you go. Keep your hands down. There you go. Keep on sinning. Yeah, good job. Don't, don't, no, don't let people judge you. Only God can judge you. He's right. And he's like, man, there you go. Keep on. Say, cheering me on? Am I on his team or what? God said, I love seeing my kids walk in the truth, walking in the light. He said, I cheer them on. When we don't, now you got someone else cheering you on. There you go. Keep it up, just like that. Keep not worshiping just like that. Oh, man. Who's in your cheering section? Determines on what are you practicing. What, what am I practicing? Is, is this a tough, is this a tough pill to swallow right now? I just want to tell you the truth. Because I'm going to be judged harder than you if I teach you a lie. Like Paul said, have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? I can't tickle your ear. Snakes do that. I got to tell you the truth. I don't want you to up there and be like, well, but Pastor Marcus said... So here's what I want you to do. I want you to start practicing. Quit, 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 quit practicing telling God about your mountain. Start practicing telling your mountain about who your God is. Amen. Start practicing telling your mountain, telling those things that are trying to overcome you, telling those things that are trying to deceive you, try, those things that are trying to destroy you, those things that are trying to kill your life, your spiritual life, your relationship with God. Start telling your mountains who your God is and what he's going to do to them. No, no, no. My God is bigger than this. No, no. My God will defend me. My God will protect me. My God will provide. Look your mountain dead in the eye and, and tell your mountain who your God is and what's going to happen if you don't get out the way. My God. But see, what are you going to practice? That's what you're going to get good at. I want to end with this. You cannot keep a committed person from success. You cannot keep a committed person from success. See, all you got to be doing is be, be committed to practice. My God, what are you practicing? Place stumbling blocks in his way, and he'll take them for stepping stones. My, y'all missed that. Place a stumbling block in his way, and he'll, he'll make them as stepping stones. And on them he will climb to greatness. Take away his money. And he makes spurs of his poverty to urge him on. The person who succeeds has a program. They got a plan. That's what I'm telling you. God said, he, he, the, 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 the psalmist said, teach me to order my days. Let me get a plan. The person who succeeds has a program. Fixes his course and sticks to it. He lays his plans down and executes them. He goes straight to his goal. Right now, our goal, we got to get closer to God. God so said, we got to get closer to God. Jesus paid too big a price for me not to be closer to God. Jesus paid too big a price for me not to be more on fire for God. The, uh, uh, he is not pushed aside. He is not pushed to this side. He's not pushed to that side. Every time a difficulty is thrust in his way, if he can't go over it, he'll go straight through it. That's how you got to be. If you can't go over it, then I'm just going to bust right through it. And I'm going to tell this mountain who my God is, what he's done. You got to know who you are and who your God is. 
the further you get from him, the harder it will be to hear his voice. He never left you, he never forsake you. But sometimes we keep doing things instead of avoiding the thief, we walk with him. Instead of avoiding the destroyer, we embrace him. Instead of avoiding the killer, we hold hands with him. And you know what the main thing you're just trying to do? Get you away from God. Don't seek him. Don't pray. That's what he's saying. And Jesus is like, man, I prayed. I died. Took the punishment so you could pray. So you could seek him. Do exploits. Be a son. Be a daughter. It's time, church. We got to look. and I got to judge me. I can't, look at, I can't look at Desi. I can't look at El Jose. I can't, look at, I can't look at David. I can't look at Phoebe. No. Well, at least I'm not like them. That has nothing to do with me and my relationship. It's right here. What am I practicing? Not what, well, I, not what did I practice at one time. What did I practice right now? That's what he's looking at. There's one thing about God. He loves to forgive a past. When there's repentance, but if there's not repentance, he can't forget it. It's repentance, man. How do I know, Pastor, when, when he's alive in me, you'll know something happened. It's radical. If, if, if you have no problem doing the same, if, let me just say this. If you can walk out of saying you received your salvation, go right back like nothing, uh, that, 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 that was an emotional trip. Salvation, something happens. Yeah, I can't explain it. The most powerful being, spirit, uh, God, comes and dwells in you, you can just, no. He said, then I'm happy. You were, you, you were trying to get a free ticket. This ain't what this is about. And see, when you come, and you're coming because, well, if I don't come, my wife or my husband's going to leave me. No, it ain't going to happen until you come. It ain't going to happen until you come. Because you want him, not because they want you to want him. Yeah. That's when it's real. When you want him. See, at first I was I was going because I wanted you know I wanted to get right for her. But then it was like no I I just want God. That's when it happened. Not for somebody else. I'm not coming to uh, uh, what's it called? Please you or or or, you know. No, I'm coming because I need him. I'm desperate. I'm hungry. I'm tired of this life. That's when something happens. See, I, I can't come so I can have favor with you. And if you no longer give me that favor with it, I ain't going to go no more. It ain't real. That's not real. This has to be real. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Will you make mistakes? Probably we're human. But he, there's just something you just won't let you commit to it. You can't commit to it. Something breaks loose. Something changes. You see the light. You see the truth. Like, 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 okay, I'm, I know. I'm, I know. I know. I said I was closing. I'm closing. We went to Houston. We went to Houston. And you can see all the pictures we, we saw right there where these cars, even cars, uh, that were on smaller roads going home in ditches. They were in ditches. And I was just, we, we, we were actually, it was, it was when we were, it was during the whole time we were broken down, the trailer I broke down. Me and Dylan had to go get, uh, uh, what was that thing? The jack for, for the trailer. We had to go buy another one because the other one stripped. And then, uh, uh, 
and then when they were towing the trailer, so I saw all these cars in a ditch. I said, these guys have been driving on this road for years. Some of them know that road like the back of their hand. And Holy Spirit right away said, yeah, but it's hard to drive on something you can't see. In other words, it's hard to drive when you're blind. You can't see the road. It's hard to drive in darkness. You can't see the road. It's hard to get to where you want to go when you don't know how to get there. But that's why he gave us this. The light, the truth. He said, the word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. It will guide you directly where you need to go, where you need to be. Telling you, you won't have to worry. You don't have to worry about your next step. Trust God. I remember when God led us to our first business. The way he did it. I thought I was going to work for my dad forever. He said, but okay, it's time to quit. Family business. I said, man, you know. I told my wife, God said this is it. She said, what? Do it? I do as the Lord said. I told my dad, man, it was rough. And, and, and we struggled for a little bit, but God always provided. But I would always go to the church. I always go to church, and they put, I told you, they would put me to buff the floors. I had never buffed a floor in my life. I never used a buffer. I was never in jail. You know, most people that went to jail, they know how to use a buffer. Right? Jail, jail prison, they use, oh, I can run a buffer. I was in jail. Okay. That's what most guys feel. Anyway, uh, I never, you know, so uh, I was banging the walls. Boom, I was like, oh, finally got it. Little did I know, the very first business God was going to have us buy had to use buffers. God was already preparing my steps. Just got to trust him. Flow with him. You'll be okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Are you going to make mistakes? Probably. But don't quit practicing righteousness. Don't quit practicing pleasing the Father. The main thing is pleasing him. Amen? Just, just stay seated. Father, I just want to say thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word, for your presence. Lord, our desires, we, we want to please you. I don't want to please man. I don't want to please preachers. Lord, I don't want to please, uh, I don't want to please the, the, the crowd. I want to please you. Come on, say, I want to please you. I'm not here to please the crowd. I'm not here to, to, to please people. Lord, I want to please you. I want to be pleasing to you. Lord, may you touch hearts tonight. Father, anyone that may be dealing with maybe hardness of their heart, opposition in their heart, right now I cast that stronghold down. Anything that's trying to keep them from you, I cast that stronghold down. In the name of Jesus, that they would have freedom to seek you, freedom to find the truth, freedom, freedom to find the light. In the name of Jesus, veils be removed. Veils be removed where the enemy has blinded eyes. I pray those veils be removed. We no longer live, try to live off of what we've done, but Lord, what we're doing. Father, I praise you. Give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all give God a hand clap, man. Now, I need you to do me a favor. Go over those scriptures I gave you. Ezekiel 18. And then all the rest of the 1 John, 2 John, 3 John that I gave you. All right? Ushers, you may serve the people. Uh, praise the Lord. You know, salvation's a radical thing. There's nothing casual about salvation. You can't casually just walk back. Boy, it's a battle. To go back, when you really get saved and go back to the world, it's a battle, man. I mean, the, the, the conviction is rough, but you can harden yourself to a point where you don't feel the conviction no more. That's a dangerous place to be. I know, I've been there. I've been there. I received some. Boy, it's just like, man. Where, where are you passing? Pa you got, where you got to pass out? What is that? Oh. Yeah, you got to. You need the envelope? Envelope ushers right here. Y'all ready? Father, we bring 
our tithes and our offerings. Lord, right now, I just pray over these tithes and these offerings. Lord, may you breathe on them. Breathe on them. Lord, I know they're blessed. Lord, I pray a double portion on these giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Money keeps on coming. <laughs>